Look at this mess. I got toys on the floor. I've got Nintendo games next to TurboGrafx 16 games. I've got my books out of order. Is that Genesis on top of SNES games? What? Why are the Atari Linux games between the NES and Sega? <gasps> What's Spider Man doing there? Time to check my list of suspects. Hmm. Sherlock Holmes has long been considered the greatest fictional detective of all time. He was created by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle in 1887 and featured in the short story A Study in Scarlet. Doyle wrote four Holmes novels and 56 short stories. Holmes was even killed off once and then the public demand forced Doyle to bring Holmes back to life. Now, since Doyle's original stories have been published, the character Sherlock Holmes has been featured in stage plays, radio dramas, movies, newer movies, multiple television series, and non-Doyle dramas. Holmes has also been used as the inspiration for just about every fictional character that uses that deductive style or Holmesian style reasoning in solving a mystery. The Great Detective has famously been played by a variety of stage actors, including Basil Rathbone, Jeremy Britt, Tony Stark, or I mean Robert Downey Jr., and Benedict Cumberbatch. Now, there are no shortage of Holmes video games. Uh, according to MobyGames.com, the first Sherlock Holmes-based computer game was released in 1984, and since then there has been a constant release of games using the character. Including the game I'm covering today, Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective Volume 1. The Consulting Detective series was re released originally in 1991 on the CD-ROM for PC. It was developed by ICOM Simulations, who is responsible for developing adventure games such as The Uninvited, Deja Vu, and Shadowgate. We'll be looking at the version for the Sega CD, which was released in 1992. Only because, man, I cannot resist watching grainy, low-quality video. Now, you can have your Cumberbatch, your Brit, even your Rathbone. Personally, I'll take a... Uh, one second. Was it again? Oh yeah, Peter Farley. Any day of the week for my Sherlock Holmes. Peter Farley portrays the great detective in this game. I temp attempted to find out more about him, but really failed miserably. His IMDb page only features the three consulting detective games. And other than that slim IMDb page... I found this ob online obituary for an actor in Minnesota named Peter Farley who happened to die in June 2017. My guess is that Mr. Farley and the rest of the cast were made up of local stage actors from wherever the game was actually filmed. Which appears to be somewhere in Minnesota, because the man who plays Dr. Watson is another Minnesotan by the name of Warren Green. I actually found out quite a bit about him. He's more known as a playwright, he earned an MA and a PhD, and currently is a professor. Shockingly, his faculty webpage makes no mention of his work in the Consulting Detective series. The game was directed by Ken Torella and written by Annie Fox and Laura Rose Bauman. So, who was messing with my toys? have a lot of toys. Never you mind that. I, I'll tell you, but I might need something first. Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective is not a game that requires quick reflexes and button mashing. Instead, it's based on a series of choices. The player watches a series of short video clips, reads through newspaper articles, sorts through suspects, and the goal is to finish each of the cases in the quickest method possible. 
The goal is to be able to match Holmes's score at the end. If you have visited the right suspects in order, you take your case to the judge. The judge then asks who the guilty party is and asks you a series of questions. Answer them correctly and you win the case. The player has a set list of suspects. If you visit the people that have nothing to do with the case, then you get a scene of Holmes complaining about wasting your time. When you visit the correct suspect, you get a cutscene. You need to pay attention to these because there's valuable information in them. If you miss anything, the game is a little forgiving because it allows you to repeat the scene you just saw. If the player really gets stuck, you have the option to visit the Baker Street Regulars or the Baker Street Irregulars. And this works as a sort of a hint system. You can use them, but they do hurt your overall score. At the beginning of the game, or at any time in the game, you have the option to watch a set of instructions given to you by the Great Detective. London is not a beautiful city. Under the soot that covers its buildings is a teeming mass of four million souls trying to survive, mostly off of each other. You see it in the paper every day. Thankfully, we have the London Times to keep us informed of all these troubling activities with an unbiased eye and razor-sharp accuracy. From the outset of the game, you have options of playing three different cases. The Mummy's Curse, the Mystified Murderess, and the Tin Soldier. The Mummy's Curse is a fairly stock story of three men who end up dead. All three men are involved with an expedition to Egypt. The blame is placed on, as the title gives away, the curse of a mummy that each of the men are involved with unearthing. The case of the mystified murderess involves a woman being discovered over the body of a dead loved one. The only thing is, she can't remember anything and is sent to an asylum. She also has a sister that is obviously nuts and definitely involved in the crime. Finally, the case of the Tin Soldier. This story starts out sounding a whole lot like the Hellfish episode of The Simpsons. If you're unfamiliar with that episode, it involves Grandpa Simpson and Mr. Burns being the last two surviving members of a World War II unit known as the Flying Hellfish. Whoever died last gets the treasure that the unit discovered in Germany. This story starts out the exact same way, but in Victorian England. Sadly, as the case unfolds, the treasure is just a red herring. So is communism. Back in the early 90s, the critics seemed to really dig this game. GamePro gave it a 4 out of 5 rating, stating that if you love mystery, you'll love this game. Sega Force reviewer Paul rated this game with an 88% out of 100 stating that Sherlock Holmes is a brilliant recreation of the 19th century crime drama and is a great game for anybody who fancies an old-fashioned mystery to solve. This game has not aged well. I have a fondness for it because it was one of the first CD-ROM games that I ever played. Uh, my cousins had a single-speed CD-ROM running on a 386 PC. As a 10 or 11 year old, I was mesmerized by the fact of seeing a clear, somewhat clear, full motion video on the computer screen. Playing through it today, it's not the most dynamic game. There's a lot of sitting and listening repeat. Musically, really, there's nothing to speak about. There's not much music in the game other than just some quick little tunes. As for the sound, well, give it a listen. It's perfectly fine for what it needs to be. Thanks. Did he give a name? No, no. He simply wanted to see the general, and he handed me a letter to take into him. Did you read it? No, no. It was in an envelope, rather yellowed with age, though I noticed it was addressed in a graceful hand to Captain Armstead, 12th Hussars, the general's old regiment. The Sega CD version is particularly rough. 
Porting this game over from the PC has made the graphics look even grainier than some of the other games for the system. The lack of graphical power for the Sega CD is obvious in the cutscenes, and it makes the actors somewhat hard to decipher. Luckily, the player only has to listen for clues rather than see many on the screen. The interface for this game was obviously made to work with a mouse. The Sega D-Pad works okay, but the cursor, cursor is not the easiest to get in the exact spot that you need. That's all about I can really say about this game. It's more of a nostalgia play than anything. If you really, really want to play it, I would suggest downloading it for Steam or on an iPad, which I do own. Um, the video there is crystal clear, and it plays exactly as the Sega CD or earlier versions. So, what are you doing here? Uh, she's making a beacon. What are all these colors? You have more than 64 colors on the screen at one time? Weird. Okay, I upheld my end of the bargain. Who did it? Yeah, it was Connor. Connor, did you make a mess?